Thank you, choir. Good evening, everyone. It's good to have everyone out tonight. If we have anyone visiting, it's great to have you with us tonight. Those that are tuning in on social media, it's good to have you joining us as well. We're going to start off the service tonight by turning in the Redemption Songbook to number 17. I know I say this all the time, that certain song's my favorite, but this one's got to be one of my favorites in this book. Number 17, I will sing of my Redeemer and its wondrous love to me.
us bow in a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you tonight that you paid our debt. Lord, you paid a debt that you did not owe. Lord, we thank you for the gift of salvation, that all we need to do is believe that you died for our sins and received the gift of salvation. Lord, we pray that if there's anyone in this service, anyone that might be listening over the broadcast, or over the uh, social media at this time, and they don't know you as their personal Lord and Savior, Lord, we pray that they might come to know you before it's forever too late. They might come to know the one that paid their debt and set them free. They just need to receive you as their Savior. We thank you for this gift, Lord. Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us each and every day. Lord, you brought us home from another fishing trip. Some have come home and gone back out already. We lift them up to you, Lord. We just pray that you'll guide and protect as only you can. Those of us that plan to go in the next day or two, Lord, we pray for your safety and your guidance that only you can provide. Lord, and we thank you for the catch that you've already provided and what you plan to provide in the future. We give you thanks for it. Lord, we pray for those that might be sick tonight that couldn't be out to this service. We lift them up to you. And Lord, tonight we just want to give you the thanks and the praise that you alone deserve. In your name we give you thanks. Amen. All right, at this time we're going to be favored with a duet, Saved. Creator of heaven and earth, He is Lord of all humanity, and He rules by His word. He is King of all the ages, the first and the last. I am His child by mercy, forgiven from my sinful past. He is a dying Savior, bruised, shamed, and despised. He is the great Redeemer, giving victory in life. He is the risen conqueror, setting my captive spirit free. And I love Him, yes, I love Him. Because he first loved me When I see who he is I realize what I am And I wonder why a holy God Would ever reach down so far And place me in his hand My ears have heard the story glory and I can turn away from his grace I'm incredibly miraculously saved he's my friend and gentle shepherd my shelter from the storm he is closer than a brother he's the rock i lean upon he is my abba father he's my confidence my love i'm dependent on his goodness lost but for his blood when i see who and place me in his hands my ears have heard the story but now my eyes have seen his glory and i can't turn away from his grace i'm incredibly miraculously saved
I'm incredibly, miraculously saved. I'm incredibly, miraculously Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship. Let's turn to number 99 in the redemption song. Number 99. What can wash away my stain? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my stain?
Amen. Thank you for your good singing. At this time, the choir is going to come with their last selection, At the Cross, Love Ran Red. There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide. Where all the love
it's my privilege to call on Brother Frank for whatever the Lord has laid upon his heart. Tonight, I want to speak about problems. Brother Terry, don't talk about problems. All of us got problems, and the world is just filled with it. You, you just hardly want to turn your TV or radio on to the news now. It's so difficult, heartbreaking, apart from killing and mugging, and you name it, uh, just seems to just go on and on in a large scale. Terrorism, but you know, these things have been predicted in the Word of God. As Paul said, in the last days, perilous times shall come. In one sense, we could shout hallelujah. It means Jesus is coming soon. <laughs> Amen. Because that's what Paul said, in the last days. And he cites about 21 things. Many shall give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Can you imagine that? And yes, he, he gives a parade of the things that's going to be in the last days. We're nearing that wonderful, glorious day when we will be translated into his presence. What a day that's going to be. Something to look forward to. So problems. Here's a woman. She tried every doctor. She had a medical problem. In, in uh, Luke chapter 8, and um, no reflection on the doctor. She tried every doctor that she could possibly go to. And if she was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Then she had a financial problem. Every dollar, every penny she had was spent, was gone. And she was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Then she had a third problem, the crowd. And the crowd can be a problem sometimes. Can you imagine losing blood for 12 years? And uh, now she, she, Jesus is coming this way. And if I could only but touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. What an amazing faith that woman had. Not touch his body, but just touch his clothes. Boy, that, you've got to give her a lot of credit. And she pressed through the crowd. Can you imagine 12 years now losing a lot of blood? She must have been very weak. And she had to go through uh, the crowd, perhaps saying, pardon me, pardon me. I must get near him. I'm only suggesting that, of course. But however, when she fell before him, she reached up and she touched the hem of his garment. And she felt a surge of power go through not only his clothing, but her, her body. And she knew she was healed. Man, what faith. So her problem with doctors, financial, was over. But she was healed. And Jesus said, who touched me? And the good old Peter, he spoke up like he always does. And he said, Master. The crowd is strong in you. That's why I suggested that the crowd probably was hindering her to a degree as well. But and <laughs> so many people are touching me. When he turned, she was trembling. Perhaps she was trembling from pure weakness with the type of problem she had, I can imagine. That's exactly what was happening to her. But there was also in her heart a deep-seated peace because she knew that something had happened in her life. And that particular problem was gone. And Jesus gave her an added blessing. Woman, go by faith has made thee whole. Boy, <laughs> that's tremendous. So she got a, a, another blessing as well, her faith. And it's amazing when you think of it. You know, I said a little while ago, problems in the world. There's a soldier, he's not a boy, but a man. He was wounded by shrapnel, or, or might have been a hand grenade or some bomb or the other. But when he came home, he had to go to the hospital, and then his wife naturally and two children, and uh, 
faithfully visited him. Then finally he came out. But they had to find a place to live. And every home, listen to me, ten homes that he tried would not rent the house out to him because he had two children. No room for kids, no room for children. One man said, what am I going to do, shoot the children? Because that's what he told one homeowner. But the, they were so despondent. Finally, he went into this restaurant, and uh, he said, he, he announced he had his life uniform on, and uh, he, they had a wonderful breakfast, a wonderful breakfast. They were hungry. They were tired. Yeah. And, um, and he told his story uh, to the waiter, who was a man, really. And they said, sir, and he told him, I don't want to sh uh, share my burdens with you, but I just feel I, I need to unburden myself. I'm so frustrated. And he told his story about all the homes that he could not get simply because he had two children. He said, you said, listen, I believe you're in luck. That's the word he used. My boss is coming in the door now. And when he came in, he told the boss the story of the soldier. He said, it's always good to meet my soldier buddies because I was in the army as well. And uh, he said, he told him the story about he was wounded and the ten homes and could not get a rental. He said, don't look anymore. See that place across the street? A soldier boy left there. They, they, he moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma because his boss moved him to, his, to work where he, he was employed. He said, it's only a one and a half bedroom, but I'm sure the two boys could be very comfortable there. So he was so delighted. He felt so encouraged. He said, Mr. That'll do, that'll do. And they said, they told one of the workmen, take the lady over there and show her the apartment. And she came back so excited, said, you, honey, it's a beautiful apartment. He said, we'll be very happy with it. He said, but I'm afraid of the rental. Uh, is it very high? He said, no, for six months, rental free. Can you imagine that? He said, oh, oh, I don't, I don't want to impose on you, sir. I, I could afford a rental. Take it or leave it. Rental free. <laughs> I'll take it, <laughs> naturally. But you know, blessing after blessing. And I said, I want you to eat here for three months without paying one mouthful of food. I own this restaurant. He said, no, sir, you, 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 I'm imposing. I know you're not. You want to make me happy, sir. You do what I tell you. He said, well, I want to make you happy because you've sure made us happy today. And then I want you to look in the car lot. It's a, it's a used car lot. It belongs to me. Pick out any car you want, and it's free. Could you get it any better than that? Well, he, he talked to the waiter of the restaurant when the boss left. He says, well, how come he's so kind? He says, because he's learned that the more you give, the more you get from the Lord. He says, from the Lord? He says, yes. He said, he's my pastor, by the way. He's the pastor of our church about uh, four blocks down the street. He gave the name of the church. He said, well, he didn't tell me anything about that. No, no, he doesn't blow his horn. That is, he doesn't boast. But he's our pastor. He's our preacher. And uh, he's learned that lesson. Listen, he said, All of, if I were you, if you want to make him happy, accept his kindness. And that's what he did. You know something? Rejection is an awful thing in life. I could take take you to other stories in the Word of God of rejection, but that's not the subject tonight. I just thought I'd throw that in to show how God provides. He showed up at church. Now, whether he got saved or not, I'm not sure. I didn't hear the, any more of the story 
for only that part that I shared with you. And, uh, and so then, this woman got her blessing. Her problem, the doctors, medical problem, financial problem. But God healed her in a marvelous way. Then, of course, Zacchaeus had a crowd problem, too. And that's not what I wanted to speak on, really. But the second thing is, uh, in Luke 38, here's a man had a physical problem. All the healings were physical. Um, I shouldn't say all of them, but, but practically all of them. The physical problem was, for 38 years, there he was, waiting to step into that pool or, or get into that pool. He had to have a caregiver. He had to have a problem getting there to the place. 38 years, can you imagine? Somebody had to carry him because he couldn't walk. He was lame, lying on that cot. Maybe the caregiver was late or what, and they had a, a at least they were told this, that the first one that stepped in was healed in that particular pool. Now whether that was so or what, we're not told. But that Jesus knew he was in that condition for 38 years. And he said, would you be made whole, sir? He says, how can I? And um, he said, well, take up your bed and walk. <laughs> to, te to tell a, a lame man that, that's been lame for 38 years, or at least at that pool for 38 years, take up your bed and walk, what would you do? Who is he kidding? Is he, is he really telling me the truth? There's no indication that that man doubted. The master said, take up your bed and walk. And so he got up and he walked. So his physical problem was taken care of. Here's a woman with a medical problem, a financial problem, and Jesus solved the problem for her. Here's a man with a physical problem, of course, she had a physical problem, too. But I, I'm specifying uh, this in connection with a man that was 38 years in that uh, particular uh, problem, with that particular problem. And he couldn't get in in time. Hallelujah. If you're here tonight and you're not a Christian, there is that danger that you may not get there in time yourself. You know, there's so many things happening in our world today. Every morning it seems like some bad news or sad news. Somebody died. Somebody got a stroke. Somebody got, had serious surgery or they won't make it. And it, it, it looks like every day you don't have, if you're here tonight and you're not a Christian, you have no guarantee of tomorrow. So time is important to you to do it now. Jesus calls you. He died on that cross for you. He bore your sin and my sin. And every pain he had, my sin caused that. But let me tell you, he is not going to be free from Calvary because in the garden he cried, not my will but thy will be done. And you know the rest of the story, how he was arrested sold for 30 pieces of silver. But it was for you and it was for me. So don't put it off. Time is of uh, utmost, uh, utmost importance. This man, uh, one person at a time could step in and possibly be healed. Uh, but I go on now and I shift. Here are 10 men, lepers. I used to visit the leper colony quite often as a boy up until I was even married because the caretakers were some of my dearest friends. One time I was seriously ill. And you know, when Mama and Papa were 10 in the family, all living in that little house we lived in, it was tough. She said to Mrs. Fox, Frankie, you're going to stay with us. Kindness, I've never had any kindness shared uh, 
to me like that, as a boy especially. I could go on and on, but that's not the talk. These men had a social problem. None of the religious sector would even hardly talk to him. They had to move away from crowd. They couldn't dare walk with a crowd or in the midst of a crowd. They were in danger. And they, they knew better than that. So they had a social problem. Families, sometimes they couldn't even mix with their families. I often wonder about Naaman. Here's a little girl. She was a captive maid. And he might have been the uh, supreme commander of the army. But he had leprosy. And Naaman, uh, this dear, dear child, this captive maid of his, why would she be interested in her, in her master's health? It's beyond me where she was. So if he only knew of the prophet in Israel, he could go there and be healed. And so, what happened? Laden or loaded down his camels with all kinds of clothing and food. And then he carried his satchel with uh, money, a lot of money. And uh, what did he do? First thing he did, he went to the palace. That's a mistake. He went to the wrong place. I want to be go quick through this. The, 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 the little girl said, the prophet in Israel, Elisha didn't have no palace. He spent a lot of time in the wilderness, outdoors. However, then he went to the king. He went to the wrong person. Oh, if we could only understand Jesus is the only one. We make no apology for that. He is the only one that could do these things for you. He could save you. He could give you the, the, a security. He could give you a place and glory in heaven itself. He's the only one. He went to the wrong person. Then he had the wrong prescription. And finally he went because his men said, Master, if the captive maid, your maid, say, uh, to go to the prophet, you should go to the prophet in Israel. And so finally he obeyed. And the prophet uh, told him, yes, you are to go in the Jordan River and dip seven times. He looked at the river, that part of the river can be very murky and said, are not the rivers, the water in Urbana and far, far, far cleaner than this? And I'm, I'm to go down in this? Well, his leprosy was worse than the river <laughs> that he was told to go and dip in seven times. I see Naaman going down two or three times and getting up and looking at <laughs> just what I thought. Leprosy still there. Go down it five times, six times, and still look. Leprosy still there. Master, go down seven times, one more time, one more time. Finally, he goes down when he comes up this time. The greatest surprise of his life, perfectly healed, marvelous, isn't it? This man, he had a, a real problem as well. He had a social problem to a degree. As a great general, he couldn't serve in the army anymore. I was surprised to, to, to see that he was in his home. Well, let me tell you something. Nine of these men, these ten lepers, never came back to thank the Lord Jesus. No wonder the Lord Jesus said, where are the nine? Were there not ten? Uh, one that came back was a Samaritan. You may wonder why the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. It's because they intermarried. Way back when they were in bondage to Babylon, a lot of the people that were freed, Jews that were freed, went back to their land. And they went right to the south. But there are those who stayed to the north uh, any length of time. They intermarried. And that's a no-no. 
with the Jewish race. And uh, so they were not really considered pure Jewish. And that's why uh, that dear woman was surprised uh, that I was, I, I'm going to refer to in a little bit. Did the nine go back to, to get a certification from the priest that they were clean? And if they did get the certification, why is it they didn't come back to the mouse and thank you? But the Samaritan, he fell at the feet of Jesus and he worshipped. He had a problem too, a social problem. But he was healed. Thank God for his healing. And he came back to show his gratitude. Boy, uh, what, what a wonderful thing that that man did. Okay. Now, you come to another situation. Pilate, I'm skipping some. And Pilate said, what shall I do with Jesus who is your king? But then the Jews said to Pilate, Pilate, if you let this man go, listen to this now, you are not Caesar's friend. Now Pilate was afraid of his position being governor. And so he had a political problem as well. And so what did he do? See ye to it. They were the words of Pilate when he sent uh, them to take Christ with the soldiers, Roman soldiers, along with the whatever, whoever. And uh, they arrested Christ, took him, not until Pilate, of course, had beaten him. I'm not going to go into detail of that, but I want to tell you something. It is important that you realize that Christ died for you. It is important imperative, in fact, that you recognize this tonight if you're here and you're not a Christian. Oh, may God just speak to your heart. Show you your need of him. You'll never be disappointed. So don't be wrapped up in all the problems of this world, of this life. And uh, just remember, the thief on the cross said, if you're the son of God, come down or take us down. Set us free. Now, he had a problem of unbelief. The other thief said, you and I are getting what we deserve, but this man is not a criminal, and yet he's suffering on our behalf. And the ever words that I enjoy and I like to repeat, I like to quote it, when he turned to the Lord and he said, Lord, he recognized the Lordship of Christ. Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Boy, that must have been one <laughs> wonderful news to that, that, that thief who had faith he didn't have any problems in his belief here, I guarantee you that. You know, uh, when, I, when I think of that poor thief, or I should say that poor man who really had no time for God, and Jesus spoke about him, and here he is in hell, and, you know, I was thinking tonight, suppose God let five people, because he said, send some men down to the earth to testify to my five brethren that they will not come to this awful place. Suppose it was possible. I'm not saying it is, but I only use it as, as a part of my illustration sent five people from hell to come to Spanish Wells. Do you think there'd be a change in Spanish Wells or in the entire Bahama Island? Do you think that the, their testimony would be enough? Well, I 
I cannot say. But I hardly think so. Because the way people are, they're swayed by their own uh, intentions in life and their own will, their own ways, and their own pleasure in this world and in this life. I hardly think that they would. Oh, my friend, so what is the answer? By faith, you come to him and you trust him as your savior. A few years ago, a daughter, she was 18 years of age. You've heard me tell the story before, but for the sake of those who've never heard it, she came home so excited because she'd been to a crusade and she said, Father, I've just come from a crusade meeting and I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ? And the father was angry and he said, I will not have that name mentioned in this house. Either you leave and he leaves, or if he doesn't leave and you want to maintain your stand, you leave this house tonight. His wife had died, and um, he only had his daughter there to give him comfort. So she ran quietly, the tears streaming down her face. She's not going to give up her Christ. She's going to leave home. So she gathered a few things in a suitcase, put it down by the piano, and she started to sing, Jesus, I and my cross have taken all to leave and follow thee. And when she was finished the song, she picked up her suitcase and made for the door, still weeping profusely. And he said, sweetheart, stop, stop, stop. Don't leave, don't leave. Your mama left me, and I've been very lonely, as you know, and you're the, you're the only one that's been giving me any comfort in this world. Don't leave, don't leave, please don't leave. If this Jesus means that much to you that you're willing to give up your home and the money, that, and uh, he had a lot of money apparently, money that I'm leaving to you, he must be worth something. Don't leave, don't leave. She came back, of course, and she hugged him. Daddy, I didn't want to leave. I love you very dearly. And I, I just was breaking my heart that I had to leave. Don't leave. And it never was brought up again. Sometimes I wonder if he ever, ever gave his heart to Christ. My friend, let me tell you, sometimes people can be hard in this world and they can rebel, they can reject. I'm appealing to you tonight going to close in prayer. And in fact, let's sing one verse or two, just as I am without one plea a cappella, all right? Just as I wonder if I could ask you before we sing another verse, if you stand at this time, is there some, let's stand now, everybody stand, is there someone here bold enough, I shouldn't even use the word, you ought to be running to the Savior, that you'll walk down this aisle right now to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, do I have to walk an aisle to receive, no, right where you are. But at least uh, publicly you will be declaring to a degree that you want to accept Christ as your Savior. Is there someone, or maybe your life hasn't been showing for the Lord, you want to be drawn closer to him, you step out of your seat, come here in the front. 
Rory, we could have a, a brief word of prayer with you. Is there someone? Step out of your seat now while we sing this second verse. Just as I am in waiting not, I think. Father, thank you again for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your kindness. And we appreciate it very much. Thank you for the Lord Jesus. Oh, God. Should there be any in our meeting tonight, give them the courage to step out for you and give their hearts to you. We ask it in Jesus' name. <laughs>